Hey gang, so not long ago, I did an interview with Swiss Tropicals at the All Aquarium Catfish Convention. I decided to order a corner filter from him with the special pourette foam. So I'm going to install this today and I'm going to talk about all the other crazy stuff you can do with pourette foam in just a second. Hey YouTube, this is Pack Tech. Well, this 20 gallon was supposed to be aquascaped a long time ago, but this uh, Fluval Flex kind of jumped in the way and I decided to do that first. So <laughs> I sort of put off really doing any aquascaping in here and so I put off installing my corner filter for a while too. Now my corner filter is mostly installed. I say mostly installed because as you can see, you know, I haven't installed this yet. So when you order from Swiss Tropicals, you're going to get this lift tube where you attach air and it kind of blows air out the side. I was really worried because I shoot a lot of videos in here. I was really worried that uh, that was going to be way too loud. Now, just like a couple of weeks ago, Joey put in a corner filter and he just put a little pump in there and then just ran it through the pourette foam and back uh, out into the tank. And I was thinking, wow, that might be a lot quieter. So I actually ordered the exact same pump that he used. And when I do put this into service, more than likely I'll be using that pump. Now, one great advantage of having a corner filter is having this kind of space to hide things. I've squished mine in here pretty good. I don't have a lot of space, but I definitely have enough room for a pump and possibly a heater back here. And that'll be a great way to keep the heater safe from getting banged into or anything like that. And uh, be a nice little pocket of water to heat up as it starts to be circulated throughout the tank. Also what's not in this kit is I did put a little bit of a dam in here because I know for certain that I'm gonna use a pretty deep substrate. I didn't do it super tall though. I only went up about an inch and a half or so. I just wanna make sure there's not a total avalanche. You know, I can easily kind of avoid that, that depth. When I asked about substrate uh, with one of these filters, he told me that it's just real easy just to kind of move it aside with your hand and pull this out. You very rarely pull this type of filter out to clean it. Uh, it can go for a really long time. Usually you wait till the water level starts to decrease behind here, and that's how you know it's starting to get clogged. But what he told me is that what he does is he just pulls the, the filter up slowly, and then he just shovels the substrate back away from it as he pushes it back in. And, and that's fine, but with the plants and stuff and the careful aquascaping that I'm going to do, I wanted a little bit of insurance that it wouldn't just tidal wave in there. So I added the small little dam here at the bottom. Okay, I want to quickly go over the unboxing of my order from Swiss Tropicals. I ordered the corner filter for a 20 gallon. He will custom cut those filters to fit whatever size tank that you're trying to build it for and price accordingly. It comes with this thing, they call it a jet lifter. You can connect an airline tubing to that to push the water through. And of course the matten filter cut in the size that I asked for. And of course I wanted a corner filter for a 20 long. This order cost me about $40 or so. As you can see, this filter can be bent. It's got these little divots in there so you can bend it into your corner. It also comes with these glass pieces. Now these glass pieces, you can silicon to the side to hold that corner filter in place. And some of the things that pull the side to do this with are a ruler, those little glass pieces, some alcohol to clean the glass and a paper towel, and of course some aquarium approved silicon and a pen to mark your place. So I'm trying to get it so it'll be bent, but this will be flat against the glass and this will be flat against the glass. And just kind of get an idea where these little support rails will need to be installed. What I've what I'm doing is I kind of have it cut, especially at the bottom here, with my hand. I'm just gonna kind of apply pressure down through there. Okay, that is at least approximately how I'd want it to fit. It's not perfectly up and down, of course. So I'm measuring from just like inside the glass here to over here, and looks like five inches is my magic number there. Okay, I think we'll still be good at five inches. And I'm going to measure quickly the other side. What's five inches look like on there? Yeah, that looks right. So it looks like five inches out. I'm going to install each of these little pillars to hold this piece in. And when that's done, I can just slide this filter in and leave it. I'm going to use this to clean the glass up and make sure that it 
doesn't have any residue on it that will kind of inhibit the silicone from sealing properly. I'm just gonna do the general area. Ooh. I believe this will eat through silicone, so you gotta be careful that you don't mess up the seals you already have. All right, what I did, so I'll just take the ruler and I measure it out. Now I'm marking on the silicone right here. And I'll know exactly where to put the first piece. All right, I'm gonna put, it says to put a little bit on the end here. That might be more than a little bit. And then I'm gonna stick it in right here where I've marked it. I'm gonna give this just a quick swipe my finger to clean it up. I move that silicone underneath. I said to let it sit for six hours, and then we're gonna do the sides of it. After a little bit of trial and error, what I've decided to do is I just folded up some instructions that I'm probably not gonna read. I've used them to kind of wedge this thing into place. I measured it out. I'm gonna check that too. Yeah, I'm still on my five inches over there. I measured out on the silicone. And I'll kind of do it as far up as I can. Let's see, I'm a little bit off. I'm trying to get this as vertical as I can. Now, I need to leave it alone. For six hours, I'm gonna let that seal. And then I'm gonna do the sides. Now, this part has pretty much dried. And I'm gonna re-measure and make sure I'm still in line here with where I wanna be. And with one hand kind of placed here to keep this level and where I want it, and the other hand here, I'm going to attempt to silicone up the sides here. I'm gonna scoot nice, steady. Oh, move it a little bit. Right up the side there. And I'm gonna repeat on the other side. I really haven't had much occasion to add silicone to things, so. All right. It's getting a little sloppy at the top. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do I'm trying to sort of visually inspect it and see how I did. I'm gonna gently run my finger up the side here. Wipe off the excess. And I'll do the same on this side. All right. Now we'll come back a few hours and do the other side. Okay, now for the other side, I did the exact same thing. I sealed the end. I let, waited till it got nice and tight, and then I siliconed the sides, and I let them sit until they were nice and tight. And I did all this before proceeding because I didn't want it to move around too much while I, when I installed the dam here. Now for the dam, I just kind of quickly made some measurements on a scrap piece of acrylic that I had, and I scored it. Uh, I'm gonna score it exactly where I want this cut to be, and I just do this by moving with the X-Acto knife over it several times. Now once you've scored it a good bit, you can just kind of break it off. And that's what I did, I sort of break it off and then pull off all that extra plastic. Now I tested the fit with the foam in there. I had to heat it up to get it to the shape that I wanted. And then I just kind of added some silicone in, much like I did the rest of it. And uh, then I put in a piece of wood just to kind of weigh it down and so I wouldn't have to stand there and hold that thing. <laughs> I then added a little bit of extra silicone on the sides and when it dried up, I siliconed the other side as well. I removed the wood and siliconed the other side as well. So just added as much of that as I could to make sure it was a nice good seal without a lot of stuff being able to get in there. Now don't do DIY projects a lot, but I thought this came out really clean and I'm really excited to use it. The other thing that's cool is because the corner filter is black for the most part and clear 
it just sort of blends into the background. So, so it could become nearly invisible. The filters I saw on the display from Swiss Tropicals had a notch cut out right here in the top. And if I re remember the instructions correctly, what you wanna do is bend this and then cut your notch or it won't fit just right. So you cut a notch. I suppose you could also puncture right through the side here if you were real careful with it. You don't want a hole too big so little critters can get in there, but I think you could do a real small hole and just squish this through it without a problem. Now I plan to aquascape this aquarium, so this is probably as far as I'll go with the filtration in here. But if I wanted to, if I was keeping this for a quarantine tank and maybe I needed to separate the species, you can also get these foam pieces cut in squares, big enough squares to use as a separator in your tank. This is a little big, but you get the picture, right? So you could just put these up periodically and then a lift tube on each one. So you can carry the water all the way through the aquarium and you've got almost no gap for the fish to escape or anything like that. You could even reinforce this with PVC pipe or something if you wanted to just take a PVC pipe and wedge it in. Okay, so if you were using this as a mountain filter, just like on the very back corner of your tank, what he recommended, like if you've got planted substrate and you don't want it to push all the way to the back, but you can take some PVC pipe We'll pretend like that's some PVC pipe, right? You can put some PVC pipe in there and it won't be able to push all the way to the back. Then of course you just add your lift tube and your heater and whatever in the back. And this works kind of like the corner filter, but it's like a much bigger space. All right, I just opened this pump up. It's a tiny, tiny little pump. It's got a couple of different options for your hoses. I'll put a link in the description. So more than likely I'll use a pump instead of the air, although the air would work fine. I'll probably use this little pump uh, just to keep the noise down in here as much as I can. It gets kind of noisy. There's a lot of aquariums and a lot of pumps going. So this porette is a really great material. It doesn't break down the way regular foam breaks down. I can't get into all the science of it. I did not completely understand, but this won't break down in the same way that regular foam breaks down. So it's going to last a lot longer. To clean it, it's real simple. You just pull it out and rinse it in some dirty aquarium water and put it back. And you don't even have to do it that often. It's got a huge surface area and acts as not only the mechanical filtration, but the biological, all these areas inside for the biological to work. And another great thing about this, of course, is that it can be cut into almost anything. It comes in a bunch of different colors and thicknesses and you can cut it into any shapes. So let's say you had a filter system for another aquarium and you wanted to soup it up. You know, this is like the regular foam that comes with like a, a fluval spec. You could buy a sheet like this. It's the exact same thickness. You buy a sheet like this and make many, many of these, like replace your whole line if you wanted to. Uh, another hack that I have for this, I'm actually gonna get a special piece cut to go in the back of my fluval flex in that first chamber. It's gonna block off both of those uh, vent areas so no shrimp or anything can get back in there. So it also provide another source of filtration for that aquarium. And I'll put the dimensions of the porret foam that I'm gonna get in the description down there below. And uh, so in case you got a flex and you're wanting to kind of do a mod to it, that's something you could do too. I'll talk about more about that later. Now I know foam is a really odd thing for me to fanboy over, but uh, I've got, a, this is just another product that I'm really, really impressed with. Uh, I was not paid to say this. I bought all this foam out of my own pocket just because I think it's great. And a lot of, lot of experts agree with me, folks. There's a lot of people that are doing their whole fish rooms on air and these things. Because they last a long, long time. They're really simple and uh, they're easy to modify into anything. I mean, you can, take, you can take your regular box cutter knife and a template and just make filters all day long in any kind of shape that you want and use them for kind of different things. Sometimes what you want is simple. Sometimes simple is better. So for those of you that ask, I love gadgets. I love gadgets a tons. But for those of you that have asked for a really simple, simple, easy filter that won't let you down and is super easy to maintain, this is it, folks. If you're curious about Swiss Tropicals, there'll be links in the description below, as well as annotated videos so you can watch the interview if you haven't seen it already. And that's all I have for you today. If you thought I brought you great information, be sure to click thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. We'd love to have you back. Until next time, follow your bliss, keep a clean tank, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.